All right, guys, this is David, a.k.a. Reverse Long. And today, I want to do a follow-up report on FLGC, which had an original price target of $2 after the report we put out. Uh, I think it was in September. It's been a while. Now, um, I was the lead investigator on FLGC. I was the guy that flew out to Columbia uh, after doing a bunch of due diligence, a bunch of research before I went on the ground, took a motorcycle up the, the mountain in Bucaramanga, Colombia, in the middle of nowhere. It was tough to find that place to begin with. Uh, they wanted to hide it, you know, made it very vague and everything. But I, with my, with my persistence, I was able to do a lot of research and do my investigation and use my architecture background and landscape architecture background and site analysis preparation to find this place. And I'm very proud of being able to find it and being able to go there in person and expose it. I even met one of the executives at the site very spontaneously. I'm pretty sure everybody up there was very shocked to see me. They're like, how the hell did this guy make it up here? <laughs> did he take a helicopter or something? Oh my God, Is it, there's no roads up there. You have to take this motorcycle all the way up through the mountains. You gotta speak a span. You gotta speak Spanish. There's no Wi-Fi. There's mud. It's all bad conditions. Anyway, I go over that in detail, and a few other videos, which you can see on my channel, on the floral growth playlist. Uh, you know, I made quite a few. A lot of them are just like really short videos of the motorcycle trip, um, and the road conditions and stuff like that. But I wanted to extensively document it, as we know. FLGC had a huge run up. It was one of the biggest pumps of the year. Uh, and I wanted to document this. This is a, like a very, this is my first experience in the shorts, in the activist shorts selling world. And I wanted to make a big, you know, make a big imprint on that and just document, do it all and do it uh, as, as best as I could. So there you go. You can see everything on the playlist. This is Javier Franco, one of the execs, a VP of agriculture up there. But anyway, this is uh, just a follow-up, you know? So let's see, a little review on it. So yeah, FLGC is a cultivation marijuana company and they've been acquiring a bunch of other weird companies uh, on the side. And now they're switching to like pharma and other things because they've been exposed and their marijuana business is not doing very well, as you can see in the stock. Um, in the chart. Okay, so this is the chart review. So they had paid promotions all around earlier in the year. I know a lot of bag holders don't want to hear it, but yeah, it was a paid promotion and pump and dump stock from the very beginning. Um, so yeah, all this was run up through manipulation and paid promotion. And then finally, uh, the blow off top was uh, they put out a press release saying that they are acquiring, it's actually a letter of intent to acquire Vessel brand. And I go over this in my other videos. Um, and they actually, what's a, so that was the blow off top when they put the letter of intent, but they disguised there, they're trying to run it out as they acquired Vessel brand for 30 million. It was a letter of intent, never happened. What's funny is that it happened on November 19th. Yeah, 2021, no, 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 on, 11, on uh, November 3rd, they acquired Vessel Brand. Finally, they acquired Vessel Brand on uh, uh, November 3rd, around here. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but um, they acquired it there. I don't know if the mouse shows up on, on Zoom. I'm using Zoom. And then uh, a, a week or two later, they did an offering. <laughs> you know, it's such a sketchy company. But um, but yeah, they, they put out a letter of intent here and to acquire. It never happened, and bam. I actually was in Colombia all throughout the run-up on the last final week. I didn't think it was going to run to 21, you know? So I flew out to Colombia um, around the top, what I thought was going to be the top. What is this, in the teens? And then when I was in Colombia, I'm getting text messages saying, wow, do you see FLGC? It's, it's, it's the few people that knew that I was out there. They're like, wow, it just, it just hit the highs. And I was like in the middle of nowhere, barely getting reception. And uh, I couldn't see the charts or anything. So I, I was like, man, when someone texted me, he's in the 20s, I, I was like completely shocked. I couldn't see the charts or anything, but 
yeah, we ended up being in the 20s. Can you believe that? So anyway, um, it fades away after the report, fades away. Also, the insider shares unlocks, uh, massive dumping ensues. Stan Barty, one of the guys uh, that founded the company, probably, you know, funded the company early on, had a ton of shares, him and his wife. You can see that in the report. And uh, they dumped like crazy. You know, that's why people do pump and dumps. They send out mailers. Oh, yeah, here's the mailers. They've been sending out mailers. So I have this burner email uh, that I signed up for a bunch of paid, you know, potential paid promotions in the past, like stocktips.com or Google, just Google stock tips or stock tips for me, get rich quick stocks. You Google all these degenerate kind of uh, language in the Google search, you're going to get, you know, some websites that jump to the top to tell you to sign up. So that are trying to like, you know, lure people that are to type in those keywords in. So then you put your email and now you can sign up to the list. So you, you can do this on your own. And I have a podcast with um, IP Hawk. He has a paid promotion list uh, that he sends out every week. Of, he does all this work for you. So you don't have to go through the, because my email is pretty crazy with all these uh, spam. Basically it's all spam. But anyway, as you can see, all these are paid mailers with FLGC in it. Uh, since May. Yes, yeah, since May, I have 91 emails of uh, paid promotions. So then you see June in here, August, August, a lot in August, September, uh, October, and November. So they're still kind of pumping this a little bit, even in November. Okay, so, and then you got, okay, so let's let's talk about Tika Tawari. So Tika Tawari starts pumping it like crazy on this day uh, in September, out of nowhere. He pumps it from like four something or five to like $7, something around there. But that doesn't matter. What matters is, okay, so Tika Tawari, this guy is a douchebag. This guy is, is, is not a good guy. He's, it's a scam, man. You know, so Tika, I don't know how he started. I don't know his history in the past. Apparently, he made a lot of money with Bitcoin and stuff like that. And recently, I saw a lot of videos of him on YouTube, on the commercials and stuff. Uh, he's trying to prom promote some other things. This guy is luring in people and saying false things. Like, like with this, he lost all credibility with me. Um, he lost all credibility. He lied. Like he said, he went to Bucaramanga, the site. Or I don't know. He investigated. He tried to find the best marijuana company. Marijuana is the future. Blah blah blah. And he puts this out to his subscribers that pay like three thousand a month to buy, buy, buy. Why? Why would you do that? And like he didn't go to the site. Tika Tawari did not go to the site. He did not go to Bucaramanga. He did not go in the mud in the mountains for three hours, a three-hour motorcycle ride all the way up there, you know, and tour the site or whatever, and meet Javier Franco and whoever's up there. He did not do that. He did not. He's, he, what he's doing over here, he put a picture next to a Colombian police. He's in Bogota. Bo Bogota, like... Is it, maybe he was he went there to have dinner and, and flew out of there. Bogota has nothing. There's nothing of FLGC in Bogota. Nothing. There's nothing. You don't. There's no weed stuff of FLGC in Bogota. If not, I would have been there. I would have loved to go to Bogota and hang out and be like in a real city uh, where there's like internet and and uh, Ubers and all this normal stuff. No, this is in Boca Ramanga. It's it's a whole other city on the other side of the of the country. That's like like being in, in Texas and California, like totally different places, you know. Um, yeah. So Tika Tuari is a liar. He's a liar. He's not telling the truth. He's a liar. And somebody on his team is forced. I don't know. Maybe he's unaware. That he's just like doing the marketing now. He's just a mascot now for his company. But he is not. This is he should have stopped this. This is not the truth. This is a lie. Uh, he did not go to Bucaramanga. And if you're buying it because of him, you uh, are buying something for the uh, he, he lied to you. He lied to you. 
So anyways, he says he's in an armored car here. Um, uh, okay, since this is an, an audio, I'm going to read it out because uh, I'm doing this for YouTube and audio now. So, okay, so there's a photo here of, of Tika Tuari's Palm Beach Investment Group um, app that he has. You paid a $4,000 uh, subscription and you get this Tika Tuari thing. And he gives you like stock tips and crypto tips and you just follow him. You become super billionaire, you know? So anyway, it says this. So it shows Tika Tuari with some sunglasses on next to a, a Colombian Federale guy. And the uh, Colombian Federale guy is real. I think he was in Colombia. You know, he just was in the wrong part. And then uh, he was ha having a good old time there. He didn't, he didn't take the motorcycle. So anyway, to the mountain. He says, the country is fully committed in moving past its battle scars. The government is pro-business and its citizens are eager to work. Not only that, but there's a legion of well-trained agricultural workers ready and willing to jump into the legal cannabis sector. After all, Colombia is a top exporter of dry cut flowers like roses. And at its core, the cannabis plant is exactly that, a flower. At the time of my visit, the government was rolling out new regulations and more were coming down the pike. But what was clear to me was that Colombia had the potential to become the green breadbasket of the world. Meaning as soon as Colombia approved the export of legal cannabis, no other country would be able to compete with the high quality, low cost nature of the Colombian plants. And the market for these products is ex exploding. The current global cannabis market is valued at 20 billion and the industry data analytics firm research and markets projects have figured to explode to 43 billion by 2025. The Colombian government isn't just indicating its support for legal cannabis, it's acting on it too. On July 23rd, Colombian president Ivan Duque signed an signed a law that allows producers to export dry club flour with up to 1% THC and let companies use cannabis in food, beverages, clothing, and medicines. This is great news for flora. It has divisions in food, beverages, cosmetics, clothing, and pharmaceuticals. And on September 7th, Florida growth received even more news. The Colombian government approved it to export 17,400 pounds of THC above 1% cannabis east this year. That gives flora the green light to explore export to European, Canadian, Australian markets right off the bat. At a going rate of 6.45 per gram, Floor has the potential to see 51 million in sales from it, just from its high THC growing operation. And a few others can compete in the Flora on cost of growth. Thanks to Columbia's great growing environment and Flora's experienced cultivators, it's been able to achieve a growth cost of six cents per gram. 93% gross profit margin at the current market rate, 25 times better than market average. Said another way, the competition is spending an average of 150 to grow a harvest one, one gram. Flora is spending six grams, blah, blah, blah. All right, I really don't feel like reading this anymore, man. This, this is uh, some bullshit. So anyway, uh, I went when I was at the site speaking with Javier Frank, or the VP of Agriculture, uh, which is right here on this really cool photo that I have of him trying to grab my phone up there he was getting combative uh so he, you know so i had this camera I, I was filming him and he didn't like it and he didn't want to let me in after he told me on the phone i could get a tour so then he got really pissed off and tried to grab try to grab my phone and like he, you know and once he realized he overreacted and all this and i was filming him he kind of backed off but yeah they, they you know so i asked him straight up right there i was like what is your plan I, I, you have on the news wire or whatever on these e on these uh, spam emails that you can uh, export for six cents a gram. Can you please explain that to me? And also, please, I asked him this. Uh, and I asked him, can you please explain how you're going to ship this down? Because like the mountain, it took me three hours to get up here on a motorcycle, and like it got really steep towards the end. Especially, there's no roads. How can you do this for six cents a gram? It's going to cost you a lot of just to build a road to make to attempt to make that happen. He had no answer. He had no answer. But going back, let's see. Uh, I'm, I don't want to read the whole thing anymore. But anyway, um, key acquisitions. They, oh, yeah, they mentioned Vessel Brand in there. Right here. Okay, so the highlight. Meanwhile, in the U.S., Florida recently purchased Vessel Brand, a smoking and vaping accessories brand. Not only did, did uh, Tika Tuari lie about like going to Bucaramanga or whatever in an armored vehicle, uh, he says 
they purchased Vessel Brand. They didn't purchase Vessel Brand. And if you can, you know, you read right here, it says letter of intent to acquire Vessel Brand for 30 million. A letter of intent is not an acquisition. I said this before in the other video. But anyway, yeah, that was the, the last catalyst that pushed this to the top. And then they dumped it. And then they actually acquired Vessel Brand for 30 million, which is, which is uh, when the company is worth less, they're giving the same amounts. So that's just, it's just uh, all sloppy all over the place. Um, yeah, the revenues were 6 million and they paid 30 million like that of the company. So FLGC's um, revenues, 6 million, they paid 30 million for Vessel Brand. That's pretty crazy. That's not that's not a good deal. Um, now, lastly, I want to start to wrap this up now. Um, so, lastly, they're switch. Uh, Flora's switching to pharmaceuticals, and they have a Flora Pharma now in the UK. Uh, so this means Flora. Sadly, you know their whole big thing of this whole run up was the. Uh, the weed in the mountain, this utopia in the top of the mountains, and the, they have drone shots and everybody all smiling in the videos um, about this whole utopia in the mountains. And Javier Franco, this guy that I saw over there, is all over trying to grab my phone. Um, it looks like they're going to be out of a job soon because, like, I, I, you know, it's that the weed they have, the little bit of weed they have growing up there is just not. What are they going to do with it? You know, there's. There's just nothing. They, they can't bring it down from the mountain. They can't. So their whole six cents per gram, it's unfeasible unless they come out with a whole system of drone shipping or helicopter shipping or something because that that, that location is totally unacceptable, uh, inaccessible. And in my opinion, and you know, you can take this for you. I'm I'm not gonna call just something a flat out fraud. I don't you know, uh, but. You know, it's like the place was a Hollywood set. They had a sign up front that said Flora Growth. Uh, they had a little batch of marijuana plants. I couldn't go up close enough, but who knows if they're real or not? Who knows? They had a few employees. They managed to get like one truck up there and th that's it, like some off-roading vehicle. And uh, yeah, that, that, that's it, you know? And the company at the time, I think was worth like, I, I don't know, something ridiculous, like $400 million or something like that. And, you know, and I go over this in the other videos, but the, the place was created to, to run, to, to do the minimum requirements to make this scheme happen, you know? And it's, uh, it all go, goes uh, down to the, the architect of it, which was probably Stan Barty. The guy that met with like Jordan Belfort back in the in the 90s at, in the heyday when jo Jordan Belfort, a.k.a. the Wolf of Wall Street, was at his prime of of uh, messing things up, all, you know, doing fraud and all types of things. And I'm going to have another in my Furu series and my, you know, stock promoter legends, <laughs> the scumbag legends. Uh, I'm going to do a, a report on uh, Jordan Belfort. You know, because he owes a lot of money and he has like LLCs in Australia and stuff like that. So he, does, he doesn't want to pay people back, his victims back. He's messed up. And uh, stuff, and another stock promoter like the Birdman, which I have a little skit with him. I call it the interlude. You know, it's a pretty 30 second clip. It actually got a decent amount of views for being so short. And, uh, and I'm going to go over and Tika Tuari as well. You know, Tika Tuari has a history as well. Uh, yeah, I, in my opinion, he got lucky with the whole Bitcoin thing. You know, it's like Bitcoin. Yeah, he, he says he made a lot of people a lot of money and all that. But man, I remember just quickly, because this is this is off topic now. But I remember back, you know, back when, when Bitcoin was very low price. I remember like my Uber driver in, in Los Angeles. So, man, you heard of this Bitcoin stuff? You know, it's going to everybody's going to be rich. And it's this and, that. and I'm like, yeah, whatever. I, I don't know. What the, the Uber guy is a genius? Is he a, like this is the time Tika Tuari was saying to buy Bitcoin, you know? So is, is Tika Tuari is a genius? So that now that this Uber driver is a genius, and I don't think, and I, I heard it a couple other times too. He just got lucky. He just got lucky. So like, 
And I guess from then on, he grew and started his own marketing. And now he's like kind of detached from the whole thing. Because why, how, why would you straight up lie to your paying subscribers uh, if you have a good reputation and you're a good, good dude, you know? Uh, something sketchy happened. I mean, look at this company with this, all this paid emails. They've pumped this thing hard. Look at that. You know, this guy is just a sketchy dude. But uh, bottom line, okay, to finish this out, it, we gave it a $2 price target. And um, we're being generous. And it actually, it cracked two the other day. I think the offering pushed it below two. It's doing exactly, exactly what, what it, that's a clean fade. Other than this little perk right here from Tika Tuari's pump, this is a clean fade the whole year, you know? But yeah, that sums it up. Thanks for listening. I'll see you guys later. I'm going to work on more of these like follow-up podcasts uh, from the reports and the paid promotions and pump and dumps and all that. But yeah, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for listening.